BlackRock Spot Bitcoin ETF has officially surpassed Grayscale as the largest spot Bitcoin ETF. And this is major news for crypto and institutions and investors. We've seen major developments come out from Gemini, where if you were part of their earn program, you haven't been able to withdraw anything since November of 2022. And now they've opened that back up. And also we've seen major developments come out from PayPal in a partnership with Solana. So if we're looking at the overall crypto market right now, we can see the overall crypto market is sitting just above a $2.5 trillion mark cap with Bitcoin hovering just around $67,000 per coin. We've seen that over the last couple of days. Market has been pretty flat. Over the last seven days, Bitcoin's down around 3%. Ethereum has been pretty much stable. Solana's, you know, down around 4 or 5%. Everything's been relatively stable. But if we're looking at the overall market in terms of technicals, there's a few key levels that you need to be aware of. And that is that Bitcoin has right now been trading just below a key resistance level of just at $69,000 per coin. And this is very important because on the weekly charts, if you're looking at Bitcoin, we've been trading pretty much sideways ever since March 4th, 2024. You can see that Bitcoin's really been staying in between just around sixty dollars and $70,000 per coin range. So in order for us to see a breakout in either the positive or negative direction, I would need us to see Bitcoin either you know break above that $69,000 per coin level on the weekly time frame and close above it because we did see a few wicks above it. We need to close above that $69,000 per coin level or else I'm very well expecting us to retest these lower levels of either around sixty-four dollars to $61,000 per coin. So keep an eye out on this weekly close coming up and what happens there because a close above would be extremely bullish. That would be you know one of the only times ever that we have seen Bitcoin close above $69,000 per coin. We've only seen it happen two other times in Bitcoin's history. And I think that could propel us to new all-time highs. If we're looking at other good news in the crypto space, we've seen that uh, crypto exchange Gemini has returned $2.2 billion to users after pausing withdrawals 18 months ago. And this is a major development that came out because they came out and announced that, look, today we're pleased to let you know that the initial earned distributions, approximately 97% of digital assets owed to you by Genesis as of the suspension date in November of 2022 are now available in your Gemini account. This was sent to customers in an email. And the good thing about this, is that if you had money in this earned program, it ultimately means that if you lent one Bitcoin in the earned program, you'll receive one Bitcoin back. And it means that you will receive any and all increase in value of your assets since you lent them in the earn program back, you know, whether that was in 2021 or 2022, just whenever you did. This is a major step in the right direction for crypto because we're seeing billions of dollars come back in to, you know, investors and people who were using Gemini's platform. And this is great news for anyone who may have been a part of it because it hasn't really been active since November. You haven't really been able to do anything since November of 2022. Now let's switch gears a bit and talk about altcoins and in particular what's been going on with Carve. So Carve is building the largest modular data layer for gaming and AI. And I've been following the project for quite a while. It's followed by some of the biggest names in the crypto space. You could see from like Dexcheck AI, Alt Crypto Gems. It's also followed by Naro Nafal, Mason Versilius, Blackbeard, uh, Ash Crypto, Lark Davis, Ivan on Tech, and many large institutions as well. But Carve is doing something very different for crypto, and I think that's why it's been able to gain so much attention. They raised $10 million in their Series A round that was co-led by Tribe Capital and IOSG Ventures. And the reason I wanted to talk about them today is that they're having a couple of major developments and node sales coming up very very, very soon. So you can see that on June 3rd, they're having their whitelist sale launch on June 3rd at 10 a.m. UTC. They have their, their public sale launch at June 5th at 10 a.m. UTC. And these are the verifier node sales. So you could join Carve to build the largest module data layer for gaming and AI and basically a lot more by joining the whitelist. You just have to uh, join right here. You click on connect with your MetaMask wallet. You need to connect your X account and then you need to connect with your email. After you do that, then you could have um, a code where you can go ahead and invite friends. And for every friend you successfully refer, you can earn one entry for each friend. But this is something that I think is a major opportunity to make uh, a lot of money in crypto and in AI and gaming for this bull market, because this is a project that has gained a lot of attention. And if you're looking at what they're doing, ultimately, Carve is enabling internet users to own, control, and monetize their personal data. So it's driving innovation in AI, gaming, and 
across the entire you know, like crypto space and just the internet in general. And with these verifier nodes, you can click on on the left hand side of the screen on their documents about uh, verifier nodes and how do they work. So verifier nodes are ultimately like lightweight community managed nodes that enhance the integrity, trustworthiness, and security of the Carve protocol. And you know, with this sale coming up, this is a major opportunity and really just a limited time that you'll be able to take part in this. So something that you definitely want to check out and you can see all the details about it right here. They've had 750 plus games and AI projects, 2.5 million gamer community, 5.7 million verified attestations, 1 million uh, CRV ID minted on chain and the list goes on and on. And next thing I want to go over is going to be with major developments going on with PayPal. PayPal recently announced that they have rolled out their stablecoin, PYUSD, on the Solana blockchain. And this is a huge development for crypto and tech because the availability of PYUSD on Solana provides users with the choice of multiple blockchains, allowing for increased flexibility and control. And the reason why this is important is because PayPal stablecoin has around a $400 million market cap. It's available on some of the top exchanges in the world like Coinbase, Bybit, Kraken, KuCoin, HTX, uh, Crypto.com. You can see it's available on uh, BitMart, and the list goes on and on. But this is a major deal for crypto because it shows us that there's continuing to be more and more mass adoption for crypto projects uh, among institutions. So PayPal has already had this stablecoin for a while, but previously it was only available on Ethereum. But now you can go ahead and if you want to send PYUSD, you have the choice to send with Ethereum blockchain or with Solana blockchain. So this is something that is very exciting to see. And according to, you know, uh, executives at PayPal and executives at Solana. It seems like they both are pretty excited about this collaboration moving forward. And I think it continues to open up the door for tech companies and traditional institutions to integrate crypto and, and digital currency more into their companies. And last thing I do want to talk about, it's going to be with BlackRock because BlackRock's uh, spot Bitcoin ETF symbol IBIT has officially overtaken Grayscale Bitcoin as the world's largest Bitcoin ETF. So as of May 28th, BlackRock BlackRock Spot Bitcoin ETF had a total of 2,800... Uh 288,670 Bitcoin versus Grayscale, which had 287,450 Bitcoin. You can see this chart right here, how we have officially seen that BlackRock's IBIT has surpassed Grayscale for the first time ever. This is the first time in the history of spot Bitcoin ETFs that we have seen Grayscale fall out of that number one position ever since the launch of Grayscale's uh, spot Bitcoin ETF back in January. Um, you know, the conversion from a trust to an ETF. We've just consistently seen them drop in terms of their Bitcoin holdings. A lot of people have been selling off positions, either buying other uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs because of fees or just selling off positions entirely. But really, from the beginning, we have seen that Grayscale's spot Bitcoin ETF has just been struggling. So hopefully we see it level off soon because regardless of whether you're investing in IBIT or GBTC, you ultimately, as a crypto investor, don't want to see this continuous drop from you know GBTC. It doesn't matter which product you like better. Ultimately, they're both beneficial for Bitcoin and the overall crypto market. So that's something that's very good as well. And last thing in relation to BlackRock, we've also seen that BlackRock had two of its major funds add IBIT to their portfolio in Q1. So you would think, well, this is a good sign. BlackRock and other funds managed by the company are now looking to invest in crypto. Yes, it is there. Uh, it's another one of BlackRock's fund. Like IBIT is a BlackRock fund, but they have you know trillions of dollars in assets under management. And now that they're actually investing into Bitcoin, into different Bitcoin products, not just for customers and clients who are saying, look, I want to buy your Bitcoin ETF. They're saying, look, we have this portfolio and we think it's beneficial to at least allocate a small portion of our portfolio into Bitcoin. There's a big difference. And this is something that is extremely exciting to see now that there's been talks of, you know, Ethereum ETFs um, potentially being passed and just more and more institutions getting into Bitcoin. So this should all be really good for Bitcoin in the long term and just help with price appreciation going into the next couple of months and next couple of years.